Good morning, Paris. Good morning, Yossi. Good morning, Rabbi. How are you? Good morning, Sasong. Is Yossi Tenenbaum on, on the line? Did you hear me? I hear you, but you Yossi Tenenbaum, he called me. He's on the line? Yes, yes, he is. Thank you. Good morning, Adam. Okay. Today is the Yom Tif. It's you, the Yud Beis and Yud Gimel Tamus. Today is Yud Gimel Tamus. And then Mitzvah tonight, we'll have a Fabreng in the Beis Menachem Mendel. And those that want to join us on Zoom can join us on Zoom. Today, since it's uh, Yud Beis, Yud Gimel Tamus, it's a Chag Agula of the Fri Dikerebbe. The Fri Dikerebbe had Mesidus Nefesh and taught his Chassidim and Klal Yisrael how to have Mesidus Nefesh. And uh, it's remarkable, 93 years later, you say that there was a group of Yidin that stood up to the most brutal, from the most brutal, or the most brutal uh, government that ever perhaps existed in the history of this world. They say that Stalin killed more people than Hitler Yomach Shemoy. I know it's hard to believe, but the, the, he, he, you know, they say uh, they, that Stalin said one person died is uh, one person killed is one person killed, but a million is a statistic. Uh, that's uh, that's the way Stalin Yamashimai was thinking, and they tried to crush Judaism, and stood up, stood up with the free the Kerebe, and with his koyach stood up the Chassidim, and uh, you look 93 years later, and who is victorious? It's, it's it's an unbelievable tale. It's an unbelievable tale of victory, and uh, gives us a koyach in our own mesiris nefesh in our daily life, when the when the nesoyin is very very strong. But uh, if we think to ourselves that the Nisyanis that we have are probably easier than the Nisyanis that the Yidin had, the Yidin that were inspired by the Fri de Kedeba and their Mesidis Nefesh, the millions of Jews that were behind the Iron Curtain that were being influenced by by uh, groups of Chassidim that went from city to city and opened up literally hundreds of mikvahs and hundreds of clandestine Chadorim and Shiurim of Toida, the, you know, uh, the Nisyanis that we have day to day in life are probably not as big. And this gives us the this gives us the koyach to stand up. And we see that in the test of time the defeat of Kerebbe was successful and his chassidim were successful. And so will we in Mitz Hashem be successful in our Avaidus Hashem. When the Fried Kerebbe heard the good news, it was like the Kvias of this year. He came, he he, he was uh if the the Fried Rebbe said that originally when he was called into the office, there was uh, there was a, a piece of paper. The one that said it was Hepa Chachaim Chas Vashon. They would uh, that would be the end of his life, Rachman Latzlan. And then it said Niet, and then to be sent away for ten years uh, in Slovakia, it was Niet, and then three years of Kastrema, and That was it. And then he was sent to Kastrema, but he was only there for a very short time. Uh, this is uh, less than ten days. He, he he came to the office, the KGB, to, to show his presence. But he needed to show his presence. It was on a Shabbos, like the piece of this year. It was a Choge by them, by the, by the Goyim. So um, so they they told him that we have good news, but we can't give it to you officially until the next day. And the next day they gave him the official good news that he was, and the documents that he was free. The Friedrich Rebbe said, uh, came when he came back home. He said the brach of Agoimel, and he said, "Amai Magoimel Chiyavim Toiv Veshuk Malani Kol Toiv." So today I will continue on the issue of Hagoimel. We spoke about it last week and the week before. We'll touch on another another nekuda on the Shail. I must say that this happens to be a question that you a very very common question, and uh, sometimes people don't even realize they should ask. Sometimes people uh, uh, really should be making a goimel and they don't, or they don't and they do, or it's not yet the time to make a goimel, or they should already make and not wait any longer. So uh, it happens to be a very, very common shaila about uh, uh, about a goimel. So here is an interesting shaila that I once had. So a woman came out of an unbelievable sakona, a chayla sheyesh sakona, and it was a miracle, it was miraculous that she came out. So uh, so now the question was, she wanted to say hagoimel. But the problem is, the minik chabad is that the women don't say hagoimel. Now there are those places in the whole the women shouldn't say hagoimel. Interesting, the Yerabe brings that a woman, the, the woman is pure. If she's suffering, it's for her husband. 
So the nest is for her husband. So uh, why should she say Agon? But anyway, the Alter Rebbe says clearly that a woman has to say Agon and every woman after she has a baby has to say Agon So why it's not Menich Chabad is very not clear. Rabbi Groner says that uh, this is all a Shmua of a Shmua, that Rabbi Groner said that he asked the Rebbe after his wife had a baby. That uh, she should, how she'd say Agamel. The Alter Rebbe says that the woman should say Agamel. What should she, she should go to shul. She should stand in the Ezes Noshim and she should say Agamel. And 10 people should be in the shul and they should answer Amen. Because the Gemara says that you have to have 10 people. It's a requirement. Some place can say if you said Agamel without 10. Now the Baki says that if a woman is uncomfortable with 10, let her do without 10. Because in Monoshech, if you say maybe... It, 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 a, a person, even if he's not chayv agomel, if he's excited, he could say agomel, and then he doesn't need ten. So how bad could it be? So if you don't have ten, you might, if you are chayv, so you're not yoitza, according to some opinions. So some opinions say you are yoitza, so you know you're three quarters there, seventy-five percent there. You, you're happy, so even a person that's not chayv could say it on their own. So you, you could say it. So you're uh, without a minion. And even if you have to have a minion, but there's those that say if you said it without a minion, you're yoitza, so nishka ferlach. So the truth is that a is uh, is something to look at. But I said an eitza. What was the eitza? I said that the the woman was uh, planning to travel overseas with her husband. So when they get to, to their final destination, the husband is going to say hagoimel because they flew over the Atlantic. Which uh, everyone has the minig then to make a goimel. Some have the minig any flight they take to make a goimel, which perhaps is quite sensible. But Lapoil, they were taking a, a trip over the Atlantic, and the husband can make a goimel, and she could say amen, or, or even be mechavan to, to be yoitza. She could say amen. Rabbi, I have a question. Yeah. It said that ishtok a gufo. So why not the husband we said the gomel we ensure with ten people is to go for like he's saying for his wife if she came from a nest or from a miracle or something. Right. So I don't know what's the problem here. I, I like to say that. I always say that. I'm gonna have the cheesecake for myself. I'll eat it up with all the coffee and ishtik a gufe. What does my wife have to have a cr- uh, maybe I'll leave her a crumb. That's good too. <laughs> my wife doesn't agree. She says it's the that ish uh, take so she can eat the whole cheesecake. I'm kidding. I'm just saying that not everything, not everything, uh, not in certain things. Well, ish take it could mean a lot of things. But uh, a person loves his wife as machab his wife. But the truth is brought up Kabbalah that, uh, that the mitzvahs that the husband uh, from the Rizal that the husbands that the mitzvahs the husband do, if it's an obligation only for the man, it's uh, it's as if the woman was makaim. When the husband puts on film, as if the woman put on film. What about the pilat haderech? No, as I said, just because you ate breakfast doesn't mean that your husband's not your wife is not hungry. If you have to eat breakfast, she has to eat breakfast. You have to say tefillah sederech, she has to say tefillah sederech. You have to say agaimel, she has to say agaimel. There's only the things that the woman are not chayiv, so she's yoitza through her husband, Afi Kabbalah. But uh, if she's chayiv, she's chayiv. The Alter Rebbe Paskins that a woman is chayiv. So, so the woman is chayiv, and uh, many people have the minute that the women make hagoimel. That uh, it's a very common thing that uh, that brought the uh, Avram Chaim Noah says the minute Yishalayim is that the people come to visit the eldest, and then she makes the bracha. The ten men there, she makes the bracha. But the, the question is, some women hold that they can make a minion with 10 women, orthodox women. Uh, 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 she, can, she can say Gomer to with the Bakiba, 10 women? It's, or not you so bad. it's not like, obviously it's not counted like a minion. 10 women and one woman are the same thing. But, uh, but, uh, but like he said, if a person's happy, he can make a Gomer even without a minion. So she's happy. She can make a Gomer. And if she didn't have a minion, there are those who shouldn't would say that uh, that's only chachili. You need to have a minion, but uh, otherwise you're yoitzer. So it's not She can make it in front of ten women, and five women, or three women. If she likes ten women, at least ten men, women. If it makes her feel good. Again, I'm 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 kidding. 
demises that uh, that uh, we have no no place to make our own to our own things. There's no such sure thing. Uh, 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 a woman that really wants to be makayim the mitzvah again. I'm going. I'm jumping from minik chabad back to the halacha. The halacha is that you have to have ten men, and the woman has to have ten men. Al Tiber says that she has to where there's ten men. And uh, and she has to say a gramel right there. Uh, these are the words Al Tereba Perik Gimel. Al Tereba says. Now Al Tereba says in Perik uh, Yud Gimel. Anoshim Chayovim Bevrochazu. It's a Perik Yud Gimel Alocha Gimel. But Lachen Kol Yishe Yelad. This every woman after she has a baby, she talks to Mechol Yum when she gets up. And she feels strong enough to work with basic natural nashim. She go to the Ezra's nashim and make the bracha. And Yishma Asar nashim with them. And ten people that are in the shul should hear. But uh, that's the saying. Amen is a, is a separate thing. Every time you hear it, you'd say a bracha. You have to say amen. The point is that they, she has to say it in front of ten people. So why it's not menik chabad is a is a separate shaila. It's a separate shaila. Why it's not menik chabad? As I said. Um, the, there are kehilas that uh, there are places that say the women don't make the baracha, okay? And the Magen Bram brings that some an issue test, and as I said, there's a, a, a explanation to it, but um, but uh, I have another question: If the same kvios like this year, the Feli Kerev came out in jail, that means he had a Monday and he had a Tuesday, and he was in for Shabbos. Only Shabbos. And Pastor Pinchas, he was saying the Pirkas game. Why was he wait, he wait? He didn't say a gram because you have to go back to your full health. He waited till he came back. He waited till he came till the Sakona. Uh, he could have said it in Kastrama, but he waited till he got back home. He waited till he was in full uh, back to safety. Oh. Okay. I said, so let me summarize this, what we we're holding over here. The the Dalta that is a woman in Chayef to say a gram. Here we had a woman that uh, that uh, wanted to say Hagamul because she had an unbelievable miracle. Well, the it's not Menek Chabad. Why is it not Menek Chabad? So I was in the middle of saying it. They got sidetracked. Sorry. Rabbi Grona says that his wife had a baby and uh, he asked the Rebbe about his wife saying Hagamul. The Rebbe said he should go to Rabbi Levitin. Rabbi Levitin said that's not Menek Chabad these days for it's because it's Nis. Again, this is a Shmua and a Shmua and a Shmua. Not responsible for it. I'm just telling you the fact is that Chabad women don't do it today. But this woman wanted to do it. She was an unbelievable miracle. She wanted to thank Hashem is Baruch. So I said, if they're traveling to, across the Atlantic and they come somewhere and the husband's going to go to shul and say, well, the woman should go with him, stay in there as a snosher. We should listen to the bracha. And Shemeya Ka'ina, she should have a mind to be Moitzi's his wife. And definitely she should say Amen as, as, as an extra thing. I have in mind that she's saying the bracha, and then she's yoytza. And uh, I'm, I'm not I'm, 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 but I just want to go into this an interesting, a very interesting Rebbe Kiva Eger on on this uh, on this subject, which is an interesting question, which could touch on other cases. Basically, Rebbe Kiva Eger's mitzayim to say for oidem gedolim. The oidem gedolim has a question. If a person say there's two people. One person was a chayla, one was a chavish. One game, one, one was uh, one was sick, and uh, he recovered. The other one was in jail, and he came out. And one person make a gomel. The other person be yoytzer from the first person. Reuven and Shimon. Reuven was a chayla, and Shimon was a chavish. Could one person make a gomel? The other one was will will be yoytzer. Yes or no? You think it's an off the wall question? Why not? What, 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 what's the problem? So the Bakiva Egez Metzayim, there's an unbelievable thing. The Oedim Gedolim was lucky. He was lucky that the Bakiva Egez had a Sefer. How many Svarim did the Bakiva Egez have? How many do you think he had? So uh, the Oedim Gedolim, you wouldn't have known, but the, uh, the Oedim Gedolim was, uh, was a Rav for 30 years in Hebron, say about 350 years ago. It was a very chosh of it of. There was a family. He was a grandson of Rebbe Avram Azulay, the Balchesed Lavram, who was a big Mekubal. He was also, uh, was also a great grandfather of the Chido. This was a chosh of a family that moved from Castilia in Spain. And via Fez, they came to Eretz HaKoydush. And uh, he wrote a sefer, Oidum Gedolim. It was a very chosh. But the interesting thing is, 
that the Shilas, and there's also, it's a different, a totally different style of learning. He, mu he must have been a Goan Otsum, uh, you see from his Lamdas. And, uh, but it's interesting that Abakiva Ege must have learned a lot of Kabbalah through the Sefer too. Because he's, uh, throughout the entire Shech Baruch, Abakiva Ege always quotes, whoever there's something, a Lamdas, something in the Oedem Gedolim, he quotes, he says, look in the Sefer Oedem Gedolim. But the rest, the balance of the Sefer is all Kabbalah, Kabbalah, Kabbalah. So it's interesting that uh, Sarabaki Vega ended up learning, uh, besides hearing the Maimon once from the middle of Eva, as we know. And so uh, he ended up learning uh, plenty Kabbalah. Interesting. But, uh, he, uh, he has uh, reverence to the Sefer and he's Metzayan a lot to the Sefer. So before we go into, there happens to be in that Drush, it's a Pasha Tzav. So first of all, one thing he talks about Arba Tzirichim Lahoydeis that uh, that uh, there was uh, you brought 40 chalas or four being, uh, three of them were matzah and one was chametz a whole beautiful pilpul that's why we have three matzahs because even when they went out of Mitzrayim they were like they went out of the they went out of the desert they went out of the yam and uh, so uh, the, so they had uh, out of the out of the Arab he says they had they had three of the four things of the Arba Tzirei Cheloid, they were Yorda Yam, they went through the Yamsuf, and they were Holchem at Boris, because in the Midbar, and they were Chovesh Bebe Sasurim, they were in jail, and they came out of jail. He says, Chayla, they were never a Chayla, Faket, Kol Machla Shehazam, Tumim Mitzrayim, Lo Yosem Alecha. And he says, the fourth, the fourth Chala that he brought was Chometz. Chometz is connected to Chayla. Why? Because he is Chometz Lavavi. A beautiful shtickle drush. The reason, I'm, I'm sorry that I even got into it. The only thing is, because I once, said this drush uh, three or four years ago, Shabbos HaGadol, and uh, I didn't know that I was Machavan Ladaz Gedolim to the Oedim Gedolim. Okay, anyway. Uh, I was just, it was beautiful. I was reading it. I said, Mamash, we're Machavan to, 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 to what he says. Mila Mila. So, but before we go further, another shtikl drush that that uh, that uh, that was be that uh, just beautiful. He says we say in the morning mizmor lasoida. One second, my battery's loading low. Just plugging it in. I'm sorry, mizmor lasoida. He said even there's a shem besimcha. Even there's a shem besimcha. So why is it dafke by? This is Soida, by Korban Toida, do we say, if this Hashem is Simcha? What's it does Azoi, the Simcha to do with Korban Toida? It's a beautiful Hezwe. By the way, if, uh, if you if you later, if you look at the Mara Makomis, you'll have to look at I sent it out in the Mara Makomis. So, um, so, so what's the Pshat, if this Hashem is Simcha? The beautiful Pshat, he says. The Zoya says, when he brings a Korban, on Simcha, on no, 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 where's the Simcha, where's the joy? The Yid is correcting that he did an Aveda. The Koinim, they have the Simcha, they have the joy. And there's a the coin together with the Israel. To, so the Yid has the has the Yida and the and and the and the coin has the Simcha. That's by a Toida, but a Toida is is is, is all Simcha because there's no Chait. What kind of Chait is there? There's zero Chait. What kind of Chait? Who's talking about a Chait? There's no Chait. So therefore, there's Simcha pure. So therefore, by by Mizmor Lasoid, we say even the Hashem Simcha. He says that's why it says that loss of love. The main carbon is going to be carbon toid. Is that there's not going to be any hate. And with this, he says, beautiful pshat in the the daven we say in the It says seed is im nasa berotzen. By the way, he says what's the pshat seed is im nasa berotzen. He says because now, it, the gemara says in shvuas daf test that the Ebesh says bring a carbon for me at a kapora because I made the yerech small. But lost in love, it says, Oira Lavona, Oira Chama, that the Lavona will be healed. So the Ebishta won't need to have a carbon on a Shredish for a Kapora for the fact that he made the Yerech small. But we're still going to bring this. The Torah doesn't change. We're still going to bring a Sidizim, but it's going to be a different Kavon in it. So Sidizim Nasa Birots, it's not going to be Behechrich because the Ebishta Kiviochel needs a carbon because he was Mamad the Yerech because already the Yerech is full. Now it's going to be Birots. Okay, continue the tefillah. Why should we say nismach kulon? What's the deep nismach kulon? Kulon, what, 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 in other words, in the, in the time of the Beis Hamikdash, kilu, it wasn't nismach kulon. But now that the Beis Hamikdash, 
uh, is going to be rebuilt will be Nismach Kulon. What's the Peshat Nismach Kulon? So he said exactly. In the time of the first and second base of Mikdash, most of the Karbanas he brought had a shachis with a chait for ovens. Mela, he was gekerecht, he cried, he was he was geklapt a sham no bagadna. With a, with a, every carbon, you have to do tshuva. A person does tshuva, a carbon without tshuva is a, if the, the, the you're not able to even take his carbon. If you realize that a person keep it, that a coin is also to take a carbon. If you realize the guy, it's a joke. A person has to do tshuva with the thing, so he's crying. Well, Mashiach is going to come. The Yid is never going to do the chait. Even the Tain is going to scream Shabbos Ayoyim. So he's going to be a chattis. It won't be a chattis. This, but, but miracles? I mean, it's Hashem. We expect a lot of miracles. So me they're going to bring a, to, a carbon toida. So the carbon is the base of will be full of carbon shlom and full of carbon toida. And this kulanu. Usually in the days of the first Agrais and Mikdash, the coin was besimcha, but the Yid, the Gikerecht, the Zok al Chait and Vidui. When Mashiach is come, and this mach kulanu, the avoid is based on Mikdash. I just, it's a beautiful word. It's a beautiful word. I just, uh, it's, it's, it's just sweet. But Pater Belokumi Asher, just to tell you over word from the uh, from the Oyrim Gedolim. But uh, but we have to we have to look into this. The MS is Lachoyrim Dakasha. The Nusal Lebroch is a Gemara Lachayovim Toivus. And uh, we once learned a Sicha that uh, the Fried Gereba when he came out of jail. He said a few my modern. Well, I mean, just to kind of think about this, Apella. You think about this. The Friedrich Rebbe had Yisurei Teufus, Yisurei Haguf. And we're talking about Marcus Retzach. Marcus Retzach, come on, let's not. He also had a hunger strike till they give him the talus at film. I mean, we're talking about, and the emotional stress of interrogation and threatening him with a gun. I mean, I, I heard a beautiful story. My father makes a Fabrengen every year, look up at his, his miracle that he had, with the story that the Rebbe, uh, with the Ches uh, Tammuz, he makes a Fabrengen for 51 years. At, at the Fabrengen, someone said, I think Rabbi Minkowitz, that uh, Fried Rebbe, when he came, right when he came back from jail, he walked into the house, he asked, I forget who it was, Tuchsidim, he said, you know, what, did the, what were you doing the whole time I was away? So uh, they said, uh, what did we do? We said to him. So he took out from his pocket there was the cigarette. Uh, you know those papers they used to have. Uh, you know they. Used to, you remember they used to roll the cigarettes. He used to smoke. You know those uh, from the papers. He didn't buy a package. He bought like tobacco, and the paper. I remember my Zed used to always. You know, f- fill up the cigarettes, and then you lick it, and then you have a cigarette. So uh, so the 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 cigarettes he they had it, the, that they allowed the prisoners to have. So he had papers from the cigarettes. So he wrote my Mordech Siddhas. He wrote Siddhas on the cigarette. I never heard the story before. He, she took out of his pocket a whole bunch of cigarette papers. He said, and I was writing Siddhas. That's an unbelievable thing. I didn't know so you think that Friedrich was trying to show off. That she, Friedrich was trying to teach them a lesson. I, I, just, I just think it's marvelous at Ayin. I always thought it's marvelous at Ayin. Every time I learned the Maimonim of Yud Bezid Gimel Tamas, to myself, you know, if you ever travel, Amazon, you just you and you, you you missed your flight, you go ahead and at two three days, you didn't learn Rambam Chitas, like Ashtikol Gemara, your head is, you feel so empty, you feel like you 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 could you can chalish, you can't wait to open a Gemara, and you also feel rusty, but finally you open up a Gemara and you start learning. Sever Lichtik, right? The Friedrich Rebbe was in jail. Yisurei Haguf, Yisurei Anefesh, Achmon Lutzlan. Comes back, it's telling my modern. It's telling my modern. Chidusha toyda nigla, chidusha toyda nister. It's unbelievable. What were you doing, saying to him? I was writing chassidus. So, uh, what was the chidush that the the the, the, the in the maimer in the maimer baruch hagoyim al chayav mtavish malani toyv? He asks a question. The Friedrich Rebbe asks, why is it that the birchas anes is baruch shosli nes? And over here is a different nusach abrocha. What's the? Why is it a different nusach abrocha? Now then the, he launches into avodas Hashem. He explains how arba tzirichem lahodas is that a yid really the eibish sends down the neshama on a journey. Some, but sometimes a yid puts himself into a makom sakonim. He put the eibish sends him into a journey, uh, and the neshama comes onto the goof. But it doesn't have to be a sakona. But a yid puts himself into extra sakona. Sometimes 
he goes into a midbar, Beruchnius, he goes into the Yam, and Achman Otslan, he's sinking, and Abishta makes a miracle and he saves him. But he doesn't answer, doesn't seem to answer the question. So there's a beautiful secret from the Rebbe, which we once learned, and the Mitzvah Shem, the Bezah Shem is Barak, we'll learn it again in the future, that uh, the, the Rebbe, Shtaltzich of them, and the, the Rebbe explains what's, ta, what's really the answer to the question. Why is it Nusach of the Bechas Anes different than the Bechas Agamal? So the Rebbe brings it, the Bechas Yosef says, what does it mean, Agamal Chayovin? What's the Pshat? So that, and he says, ah, and he says, Chayovin means Rishoyim. And uh, he says, Afa Pishaini Hogun, even though I'm not Hogun, the Ebesh that gives good to the Eden still, Gamalani, Bechol Toif. So you could touch the the Beis Yosef means that I'm not Roy to get, just like a Rosha. It's not Roy. I'm also not Roy. But, uh, but it's still the Ebesh the Chesed for me. But the Friedrich Rebbe says, no, in the, in the Maimah he says, She yimtza choyv ba'atzma, ashe ba'aburi omed rechmar al-atzlam b'sakona, v'hu ba'atzma moide she yechayv b'davar ha-sakona chaz m'shalom. But the Yid is moide that he put himself in sakona. He was chayv. And b'meila, and uh, uh, he thanks the Ebishter for the miracle. So the difference is, by a, by a miracle that's time, it's a give a So why should, well, okay, thanks to Ebishter for the nice. But in the Arba Tzirichim Lahoydas, he was physically in Asakona because also spiritually he's in Asakona. Because everything that happened in the Eid, physical comes from spiritual. So because spiritually he put himself into Sakona, the Ebishter sent him to do a Shlichus and the Shaman Aguv, but he put himself into danger. So therefore physically also he ended up in the Mokim of danger. And still the Ebishter, even though he was a Chayov, but the Ebishter saved him, but this doesn't sit so well with uh, what uh, the Oyrim Gedorlum is saying. That the Oyrim Gedorlum is saying that there's Besimcha, because I told you, there's no Chayt, there's no Oven, there's no, there's no Chayov. It's all, it's, it's pure simcha, it's simcha v'taros. Okay, you can't shrink in kasha of drush, and the Oyrim Gedoyla might have learned like a Beis Yosef, not, be, that, not that he's chayiv, but afa pishayin hogan, even though I'm not worthy, but there's nothing to do with chayiv. And even according to the way the Friedrich Kerebbe learns the pshat, but the poil, he, he, he must have done tshuva, and, 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 and therefore he came out. And even, and even if he didn't do tshuva, but the, the Ebishter was, uh, through the Yisoyedus that he had from the miracle, so it's not like bringing a korban, uh, it's not the same like bringing a korban on a chait, like a korban, which is a chatos, or an osham, or osham vader, osham toloi. So over here, there's a, a tremendous simcha. When a yid says a goimel, there's a tremendous simcha. So that's the chap why we say by Mizmar al-Sayyid, the yid is Hashem b'simcha, because the korban toy, this is an unbelievable simcha. And Rabbi especially is, the sheikh is going to come. Rabbi's question. Yeah. Two questions. First of all, Orim Gedolim, what was his name? The Orim Gedolim, his name was Rabbi Avram Yisrael Zahavi. Avram Yisrael Zahavi. Okay, thank you. Second one, according to the Shita that the woman said, uh, Gomel, and uh, ten men downstairs answer, what the answer? Hagomel Echaavim Tovot Shegemalach or Shegemalcha? It's a different in the dictum. You're right, you're right. Sasan, you're good. Sasan, Sasan, you're good. Uh, they'd probably have to answer based on that Nusach, Loshan Akeva. Because mm. it wouldn't make sense to say Loshan Zohar. I mean, so maybe the, the Ashkenazim, the, the, who, don't, who, don't, who never learned any what's it called and don't know the difference of Loshan Zohar and Loshan Akeva, uh, could accidentally say the wrong thing. But uh, but definitely, uh, you're right. You're making a good point. Just because in the Siddur it was printed, Misha Gemol Cho, Toi, Hui Gemol Cho, Kol Toi Selo, but you can't say that to a woman. Mm-hmm. So the truth Thanks. is, you're asking, you're raising a very good question. Could be that the minute of saying Misha Gemol Cho is only the men and not women. The woman says the bro, the, 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 this whole Nusach, Misha Gemol Cho, is not brought in the Gemara. It's a mini gestural that developed later. Could be that this is only a man. Why would you say it's not by women? What's wrong with women? Or do we, do we need to run now to, to start making women on them? Because this is terrible uh, uh, discrimination against women. Not so chas v'shalom. It's not discrimination against women. It's just that the uh, the minig was that men made the bracha and, uh, and the men were answering to each other. So they developed to have this thing. 
And but but uh, there was never a minic for Lagabe the woman to say it. Also, there is an akuda here. It's a, you're not allowed to be sh- uh, doidish bishlam isha, klal. You never, you never, you know, you don't. That, that's I, I noticed something at Varpela Otsumayoid. I mentioned the Shabbos the Kiddush at the Fabrengen. That uh, so, someone told me he saw in the uh, published in this uh, booklet called the Her that uh, the Rebbe never wrote to the woman Shalom Bracha because you ain't Shalom Shlam Isha Klal. So I don't know that there's hundreds of letters from the Rebbe to women. I just I don't understand. This was the only Rebbe that uh, that communicated with women directly. Even the Friedrich Rebbe, you would have a man that would write to you, your your husband, but the women that ever. I looked Shabbos morning. I'm learning now Tov Shalom and Beis, and I'm looking through every letter. There's beautiful letters. There's a letter to, to some of them to relatives actually to to Shifra Marozov, um, to to who is Mishpacha. Uh, beautiful letter here. I mentioned Shul Tov Shalom and Beis. My Shifra Yehudas Marozov, Shula Kazen. Every time there's a letter to a woman, instead of Shalom of Rach, it says Bracha Shalom. Might not even happen. I went through the entire Lamed Beis. Oh man, oh man, it's true. It's true. Every time that ever writes a letter to a woman, it's not Shalom of Rach, it's Bracha Shalom. What's the difference? When you say Shalom of Bracha, you're saying Shalom. You're saying Shalom. Shalom Aleichem. Part of the shalom is bracha. But when you say bracha v'shalom, it's a different thing. You're giving a bracha. You're not asking. Or you're not giving a greeting. A, you're also adding that this bracha should be an oifin of shalom. But you're not shayl b'shalom. The Rebbe was like mamish, like it says by the Kohen Gadol. He was mavliya b'neimus. In a sweet way, he made that it shouldn't be chas v'shalom, that women should feel hurt. What's the difference? You could say bracha v'shalom, shalom bracha. I'm getting a letter from the Rebbe, and it's the same two words in the top. I'm year, a years I'm learning the Igris, and I never even, never even realized it. Shmulek, you ever know, know, knew this? I only knew that the story that one time a, a lady writer from a newspaper came to the Rebbe to 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 report about him to make a article. So she didn't know, and she came in and she gave the Rebbe the hand to shake the hand. And the rabbi says, since I'm three years old, my parents told me something is not belong to me, you don't touch. <laughs> rabbi, I have another answer. Why the rabbi, why the, the rabbi said, bracha v'shalom for a woman and shalom of bracha for a man. Because yeah. shalom of bracha, shalom is the name of the man. Uh-huh. Shalom, shalom. Woman is a bracha. She said, bracha v'shalom, you're a woman. Nice. Bracha, a song, get, you're on a roll too. today. Sasan, Sasan, you're on a roll. We're riding with you today. I tell you why. My wife, six o'clock in the morning, she went to the oil. Ah, ishta <laughs> kigufoi. That's right. And when she goes to the oil, you have an unbelievable light that shines into your neshama. Uh-huh. No, so I haven't go to that. The big Kavana. You know, I said uh, I went to Khan. I said all the way, and I haven't really with Kavana, 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 and Baruch nice. Hashem. Very nice. No, oh, really? Yeah, you're in a Question. Yeah. Can, can some, what, what about saying Shabbat Shalom to, 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 to a woman? Does one do that? You're asking a good question. I'll be my eye and glean other. I'll give you an answer next week. I, I don't want to say uh, from the top of my mind, Svartis. Uh, I wrote it down. Glean other. I'll be my eye and see what the. Uh, why, why say things from the top of my mind? I said to I, your wife, I should sure say it. No, for your wife, what's the shy? You should take a good for it. I should say it. You should say more than Shabbat Shalom to your wife. Pencha, say good Shabbos. Don't say Shabbat Shalom. You should say both. Okay. So, again, let's summarize what we have here. So, um, I didn't even get into the lumbus yet, but let's be, uh, best summarize. We said, uh, uh, basically we asked about a woman saying, in general, about women saying a goimel, and here is specifically about cross, doing cross a goimel. So if uh, there's Ruben Shimon, and uh, Ruben had uh, one type of miracle, Shimon had a different type of miracle, one was a choyla, one was a chavush. Did one person say they are a goimel, the other one be yotze for him. As I said, Rebbe Kiva Eger says to look in the Sefer, Oidem Gedolim, 
uh, who was a uh, Mekubal and also Poisik, who was a uh, uh, Rav and the Rosh Hashiv in Hebron about 350 years ago. Okay, so the Oyrim Gedolim says a beautiful lamas like this. The Mordech says in Zvochim, it's just like interesting how he goes from Kabbalah and Drush and is straight into very deep Nigla. Uh, it's like a different, a different way of learning. Unbelievable. He goes into a beautiful Gemara. It's like, the upshot of the Gemara is like this. The Gemara is talking about the Korban Toida. So the Gemara says, what should we do like this? Two Yidin come to the base of Mikdash. Two Yidin come to the base of Mikdash. And Toida Shanishtat L'Shem Toida Shavedoi Rava Meksher Rebchizdam Absolut. So let, let me explain. This is a, a long, complicated Gemara. Just simplify what's negated to us. The whole complicated Gemara is not negated to us, but just this. Um, the Chazal say that uh, if, if, if Ruben Shema come and the Kayim mix up the Karbonas, they're not oil, they're, 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 it's not counted. It's kosher Karbon, it's not counted for Ruben and Shema. Now, the Gemara makes it clear. A toy dal toy What does it mean? If I come to the base of Mikdash with two carbon toys, the Koyan says, Why? I say, I'm a I was sick, I recovered, and I was also in jail, I came out. The Koyan accidentally, uh, Billy Goat number one and Billy Goat number two with Gemach Tatos. He was thinking that, uh, and he mixed them up. I dedicated the, the first one for Chayla, the second one for Chavish, and he did the other way around. So you know, it doesn't matter. I have to bring two carbon toys. The Koyan didn't make any Shinu here. I have to bring two carbon toides for two things. And uh, it's, 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 it's not a problem. The problem is when Uben and Shimon both came to the base of Mikdosh, they both have to bring a carbon toide. Ruben says, I was a choyla, Shimon says, I was a chobush, shayotzam and beis And now the coin didn't make it mix up. He knows Ruben's goat is Ruben, the Shimon's goat is Shimon. The problem is he really he thought that Ruben is bringing, he mixed up. Reuven really was a chayla, Shem was a chavish, and he thought the opposite. Reuven was a chayla, Shem was a chavish, and he thinks the opposite. That's it. That was his mistake. So that's the machloikis, if it was kosher or not kosher. In other words, if they, were, they fulfilled their chayv with their carbon or not, or they have to bring another carbon. So, so he says, says the, says the, what do we see from this? That when you bring a carbon toida, it has to be dedicated for your thing. The Arab and Sirichim are not inter- interchangeable. If it's for Chayla, it has to be for Chayla. It's like, it's like a different type of carbon. The four things are not like interchangeable. They're four different carbonas. Now, the, the Rosh says that the carbon, we spoke about it uh, two weeks ago, that the carbon, uh, that the Bich Zagoymal, the Mokim Toide Takim, that the Bich Zagoymal is in the place of Agoymal. I'm sorry, Agamel is the place of a carbon toida. So we see there's a connection of Agamel and toida. So just like by a toida is a shaila if Ruven, if Ruven, the coin mixes up Ruven for Shimon, in other words, because he thinks that this was a chayla and this was a chavish and he mixes it up, so it doesn't work. Same thing like Abi Agamel. If he's make Agamel because he's a chayla, he was a chaylish and it's a but I was a chavish, so I can't be yoitz with him. How can I be yoitz with him? He says, maybe if I'll say Amen, the fact that I say Amen is going to help. Why? Because the uh, Gemara says the whole story that uh, Rabbi Huda was Cholosh V'itpach, in the beginning of the Lanai Perek in Baruchis. Uh, uh, Rabbi Huda Cholosh V'itpach. Uh, and then Nichna Sochon and Bagdasa V'rabonon to Levakre. And they said, Brich V'chamon and Diyav Lon, V'layavach L'afra. And he said Amen. And he said, Patrosim Eloi Doi, you are not allowed to say Agoimel anymore. So the Gemara says, why? The Gemara says, he says, Amen. So the Rosh asks, and this is the way it's passed in Shulchan Aruch, why does he have to say Amen? You don't have to say Amen. Amen is a separate thing, because it's icing on the cake. When he'd say, here's another, he'd make a brach, he has to say Amen. But your Yoyt is a even without saying Amen. So he has a big Chidush, the Rosh. He says that uh, it depends. If a person has a miracle, he's chayiv to say hagoimel, and he's chayiv to say hagoimel. But another person that is happy for him is not chayiv, but he's allowed to say hagoimel. 
So those students that were happy for him, they're allowed to say agoyma, but they're not chayiv to say. He is chayiv. So what do you mean shemei agoyma? We're not in the same plane. If someone's part of something and I'm chayiv, I can't be yotzer from him. I can't be yotzer. Just like a woman can't make avdolah for her husband because she might be part of it. It's a shayiluf, she's chayiv avdolah. How can I be yotzer from her? Kiddush, yeah, avdolah not. So, so therefore, it's by, by saying amen, amen is as if Whatever that person said, I said by saying Amen. That's the way Shachar Pasuk and Semer Eishu test if Gimel and Siv Dalit. That if he is Chayiv to say and I'm Chayiv to say, and he says again, well, I'm Shemek Aina. It's good enough. But if he is not Chayiv to say and I'm and he made a Gemel anyway, I have to say Amen in order to be Yitz. The funny thing is the Alter Rebbe doesn't bring the Salocha. He doesn't bring the Salocha. He ignores the Salocha. I think the reason is that it must not pass in the Shukhanor. The Ritva in the Shukhanor says, no, nah, he's Amen is Kadin Azbah. He meant he listened to the Brach and he also said Amen. And that's probably what the Alter Rebbe holds. Because if the Alter Rebbe held the Rosh and the Tzavah Fedish are two Sefer with Shukhanor, the Alter Rebbe ignores it. So I think the Alter Rebbe doesn't hold of it. But going back to the Oyrim Gedolim, he says, maybe if you say Amen, you're Yoyt, but maybe not even going to help. Because when it's uh, the Talmidim of Chonon Bagdasa and Abonon, Chonon, you hear a uh, Sasson, Chonon Bagdasa, that Chonon from Baghdad. We had Tanoi, the Amiram that lived in Baghdad. I mean, we know they all lived in Bavl. The Muslim were from Padisa, Suda. But here, the uh, Chonon is called Chonon Bagdasa, Chonon from Baghdad. So they were all making the, for the same Choylash in Israel, which is they were potter and he was Chayyim. So in order to be Yoytza, they. It wasn't good enough Shemei Kain, and they needed to say Amen. But if, uh, say, they were Chavish uh, and uh, and they made a Baruch it wouldn't even help to say Amen. That's the, that's the question. And he leaves it with a question mark. He leaves it with a question mark. It's a beautiful lumbus. I know it's a little bit uh, hard to follow, but uh, it's like, again, bottom line. We see from the Gemara that... Uh, that uh, carbon toida wasn't just you know you really, you four types of people need to bring a carbon toida, so uh, you interchangeable. There is two four different it's as if four different type of carbon toida for your dayam when they go out, healthy bodies when they come out, all four things are different things, and you can't interchange them because a goimel is connected to a toida. It's the same thing by a goimel. But I would say like this, there's a tshuva from Chassam Seifer, the beautiful story was that all, that he came, he came off the boat. And the whole kihila came to, came to greet the Rav. It was already after Shkia. And they all, hundreds of people came to greet him. And he was so besimcha, as soon as he came out, he made loud the brach of Agon. Op, 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 Right away, people started tining it. The meaning is you make it by Sefer Torah. Well, why did you not make it by Sefer Torah? And the Lamdonim started to say, a goimel is in the place of a Karim Torah. And Karim Torah, you only can break by day and not by night. So you made a brachel of Atola. <laughs> so they sent the letter to the Chassam Seifer. The Chassam Seifer justified him, but for a very funny reason. For a very funny reason. The old diuk in the Loshan of the Posuk, the first three... Category is a chayv toida, and the last one, which is yerdayam, is chayv agoimel. It's not really a problem. To, anyway, I don't want to go into uh, the lamdus the chasam seifer, but uh, the bottom line is that the chasam seifer says that what happened was when they destroyed the base of mikdash and there was no more korban toida, they brought a goimel instead of a korban toida, and that's a pshat in the rosh that a goimel is b'mok and kar toida intact. When I read this chasam seifer, I thought besides all the other chiddush he says in the tshuva that it's like sing off the wall. But this in particular, it seemed to me off the wall. The Gemara says in Brachas, the Flamet Gimel, that the Anshik Nesagdela made all, wrote all the Brachas. Me and you have no right to write Brachas. The Anshik Nesagdela wrote, when did the Anshik Nesagdela live? In the beginning of the second base of Mikdash. For 420 years, they were still bringing carbon toida. And in, in, in Bechlal, the Brachas were, were, were a Takona from Dovda Melech. Uh, so maybe Dovda Melech made a Takona and they wrote them the Nusach HaBroch, and he made the general thing. So HaGoyimel is probably around since the days of Dovah HaMelech, and for sure from the days of the Anshik Nes So what are you telling me? It's instead of the Korban Toida. So I, so the Ebesh HaGohofen I found is an Avni Nez in Semel who says 
the pshat is the mokim that the uh, agaimal is the mokim toida. Whenever you have a toida, you also have a goimal. Chazal said, I want you to thank the Abishter by saying the Baruch of Agaim. When? So you should know. Whenever you're also bringing a carbon, whenever you bring a carbon to the base of you should know you also, on your way out, stop by the minion and say Agaim. The Mokim doesn't mean instead. Toida be Mokim, I'm sorry, Goimel be Mokim Toida, Goimel be Mokim Toida doesn't mean instead. That Agaimel is instead of a carbon Toida. A, a goimel is in the place. Busedo, a carbon toid is oichedo. A brach of a goimel. When you chayv to bring carbon toid, you also. And where, who is chayv to bring carbon toid? The David the Melech has a whole capital until him of Zion. By the way, the Baal Shem Tov said that we should say it Friday night before Mincha. Why? Based on what the Maima from the Friedrich Rebbe, you understand it very well because when a yid is goes into the Avodas Hashem of uh, six days of the week, there's a lot of nisyonis. And when he comes out in Shabbos and he goes into Shabbos, Ali Yisraelimus, it was like he has to thank the Ebishter, Beruchnis. He might have gone through all four things. He might have been drowning Rachman al Islam and he might have been in a midbar, Beruchnis, and he was a Chayla and he was a Chavish. And therefore, every that Bashem uh, was Mataki, and every Friday night we should say this capital tell him. Rabbi, a question. Yeah. We know that four that uh, have to say the Gomel, somebody Chole, is very, very bad Chole, you have to say. Now somebody in jail and go for a week or two and he has fun there. He's in nothing right. in jail. When he get out, he has to say Gomel too? So the Alter Rebbe has a very interesting opinion about this. It's a big discussion in the Poiskim. Um, the Alter Rebbe says, Mishe Chovish Mubeis Asurim al Iske Nefoshes V'yotza Oy al Iske Mamim Imo Yom Une Bechevle Barza If it were metal handcuffs on his hands, regardless of why he said, even if he had fun, it's painful to have metal handcuffs on, on, on Rahman al and therefore he has to make a goimel. But otherwise he doesn't have to make a goimel unless it was capital punishment against him. So uh, if, he, if there was no capital punishment and there was no metal handcuffs and he had a good time in the jail for two weeks, then he would, according to the Alter Rebbe, he would not say a goimel. Now it could be if the person's Sephardi would be different because the, the Svar de Pais can not all talk about this um, specifically, and, uh, but I would think, I would think that just like by Choyli Mederech, the Svar de hold that Kol Choyli Vechol Derech, so I would think that they would hold also by Yotzim Beis Asurim. It doesn't matter why Yotzim Beis Asurim. But Tzari Chiyun, still. Sorry, Chiyun. Rabbi, when I was in the army a lot of years ago, I was two weeks in the army jail. But because I was an officer and it wasn't my fault, somebody higher rank for what happened. So they put me in jail for two weeks. But in jail, I sit, I sat the whole day and I had books and I, I read and I learned. Other officer has TV, you know. So when I got out, I went to a rabbi, Sephardic rabbi in the army, and I asked him if I have to say Gomel. He yeah. said, no. He said, you learn so much that it's like a university for you. So you don't have to say Gomez. <laughs> okay. Okay, I hear. I hear. If he told you yet to make a guy, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be upset. I would say that maybe he had the feeling that uh, just like the Svardim say, and he felt is the same. But on the other hand, you say like, uh, like he said, you know, you were learning Torah and you had a good time. And you were not, uh, there was no Iskin of Oshis and you were no Kevle Barzel. Uh, there was no Chavle Barzal, so uh, therefore you're okay. Makes a lot of sense. Thank you for sharing the story. Okay, so I would say that this the, uh, the, this question of the Erem Gedolim is really totally in the Machlokes of Chassam Seif and Davin Nezer. If you say, Hagoyim al Mokim Toida, means instead of a Karben Toida, so the same rules of a Karben Toida would apply to Gaimel. And just like we see in the Gemara, that a Toida was not a simple thing. The four people, they have to be Moida. Choyla and the Chavash are a totally different thing, and you can't mix up the Karbonas. So you can't, if he, he's making a Gemel for Choyla and the other guy's Chavush, you can't, you can't connect them. Even if you say Amin, it's not good enough to bridge the gap. It's a totally different thing. Amin is going to help bridge the gap, according to the Shulchan Aruch, between a person who's Yechayev and Atchayev, but uh, not between a different thing. That's according to the Chassam Seifas understanding, according to the Avni Nezer, which I think is more glad that uh, a Gemel. Is not instead 
of a carbon toide. Bemokim toide. Chazal say, whenever you bring a toide, you also say a goimel. But it's not the same thing. The nafkamina would also be in the opposite case. Let me ask a question. If I have a person that's four miracles. He was in jail and he came out. He happened to have been also very sick in jail and he was healed, Baruch Hashem. And, uh, and uh, so he decided now he's so happy he went out that he traveled through the desert and took a boat over the Atlantic Ocean. And now he came to, now he came to Eretz Yisrael. Ah. <laughs> he has all four things. Did he make one bracha agayim or four brachas agayim? According to the Chassam Zayfer, you could argue, maybe not, but you could ask even the question. Just like his chayv to bring four carbon toides, you should have to say four times bracha agayim. Instead of the carbon toide. You couldn't bring one carbon toide in the base of Mikdush. You have to bring four carbon toides. You have to say four times agayim. No? You hear what I'm saying? But the Shenkein, according to the Avni Nezer, nothing to do. Whenever you chayv a korban toide, you also, the Chazal said to Goimel, Goimel saying, thank you, Tashem. So you can say four times, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You can argue, you can argue with me. And say, More mistabit to me, the according to some say, maybe you have to say four times a Goimel. According to Avni Nezer, what's the pshat that a Goimel is mocking a toide, not instead, in the place where there's a toide, there also is a Goimel. But the Goimel is saying, thank you. Maybe he'll come to the base of Mikdash and bring four carbon toides, but he'll say one time a goyimel. So you say only once a goyimel. Okay. So, so uh, I would summarize like this. If I needed to summarize it, I would say very simple, that it's not a problem. It's not a problem. It's mamish not a problem for um, if, if there's a, uh, there is a four people that have to be moidin. And each one has a different reason. And one wants to say the brocha, and the other wants wants to be yoitze by listening. That uh, even by listening, even without saying amen, even without saying amen, that be yoitze. The Oyrim Gedolim leaves it as a shayv, and I think it's tall in the Chassam Sofer the Avne Nezer. And I just it's like it's, it doesn't enter my mind to say like the Chassam Sofer. I think the Avne Nezer is right. And uh, I just don't see another way to it. So the, the, I think it's Pasha, but when it says that uh, uh, that Berchas uh, the Malkim Toida means when there is a Toida, there also is a Goyimel, not instead. So therefore, it, it, it would be two nafkaminas to what I'm saying. Number one, if a person had all four miracles, but he still says only one Goyimel. On the other hand, if there's four men that walk into Shul, and one says that he was Yerda Yam. The other one says he's Holchim and Boris. The other one says he's a Chayil of Nisraf. The other one says he's Chavish Beis Asurim. Four people. And they, and, and, they, and they want that one person should say the Bracha and they should all say Amen. I would say it's not a problem. So back to the question. And this question, I think everyone would agree. Because the woman, she first of all, she herself traveled over the Atlantic. She herself traveled. So it'd be like a person himself Unless you say she has to say now twice, I'm going more. But uh, even the some Seifer will agree that you only say once I'm going more. Carbon toy, that's a different carbon. I'm going more, you say four times I'm going more. It's a joke. It's a karnech, but it'll count, it'll count. Taki, you have four times a chiv to say I'm going more, but once I'm going more, it knocks off all four chiv, maybe. Either be it as it may, in this case, the woman's chayiv anyway, because she traveled with her husband. And therefore, when he says the bracha for the Yerdayam, she could be Shemei Ka'ina, it's no problem. Even if she didn't say Amin, just Shemei Ka'ina, she was Yotzeh. And there was 10 men there, so she was Yotzeh the Mitzvah Kedaboy. And the Frat, so, and, and, and the, the, the Frat that I hold, that it's not a problem to start going to go from one category to the other category. So for sure, it was an Eitzah Toiv and it was a good thing. I remember last week we spoke about it. Two weeks ago we spoke about it. We said in seventy eight the ten people came from overseas. Yeah. They announced each one should say, but not by the Rebbe Minion, go a different right. minion. Not one right. said loud for everybody. Right. So each one should say it. It's not enough. Yes. I, I looked into it afterwards and I see that the uh, Adiuk Nifla, Adiuk Nifla, not Sam Adiuk, Adiuk Nifla in the Alta Rebbe. Simon and Eshud Gimel, in Simon and Eshud Gimel, you know what, I'll leave it for another time. Uh, uh, 
But I think, yeah, there is basically, according to the Alter Rebbe, it's a suffix, a shakal. There's a, you can do it either way. There's no myla. There's some communities that they think that uh, there is a myla, one person should make a bracha. Now, it could be the reason they think it's a myla, not because it's just because a, a thousand chassidim came, and it's simple, one person should make a bracha, one say amen, and that's it. But according to Alter Rebbe, there is no myla one way over the other. If you want, everyone should say their own, say their own. Everyone that they want to say it together, together. It depends how you make Yiddish Friday night. And that doesn't matter if there's a minion or more than a minion or less than a minion. And uh, the, it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. You know what? So we're already on it. So I'll, I'll, I'll read in the Alter Rebbe. The Alter Rebbe, Simon Eishet Gimel, the Alter Rebbe says like this. If 10 people eat together a meal, so then the chayv that one person should make, that might be for everyone. We don't, have, we don't do it that way. We have in mind Kilo, we're eating separately. But, but that's the din. The Alter Rebbe continues in Simon Eishet Gimel at the end of Sif Hei in Sif Vav. Who are the Mebichas HaMitzvahs? Ten people are doing the mitzvah together. Kigom, for example, Shmi is Kerl Shoifer or Megillah. Mitzvah Sheechad Mavarech Lokulam. You must have that one person should make the Baruch of everyone. Bein Takeya or Yakoyda, Bein Echem and Hashem. It doesn't matter. The Baal Takeya could make the Baruch of someone else to make the Baruch of. It should be one Baruch of everyone. Vechein in Yoshim B'Sukkah Achim. Same thing if they're eating in one Sukkah. A little bit Tzarechim. We do not know it that way. Uh, the people they're making everyone makes their own Leishem B'Sukkah. I'm not sure why. But he says that if, if a whole bunch of people are doing the mitzvah together, so then you must have one bracha. If, if, uh, if five or 10 or 20 people are hearing the same shofar, 20 people are hearing the same megillah, then you mechuyiv that one person should make mitzvah. Mitzvah The mitzvah is that one person should make the bracha. Abel continues, If they want to split up, everyone is going to read his own megillah. Everyone is going to blow his own shayf. It should be other than to have the, the, the right to do that. Go and shik or kalach the Megillah la'atzma. Every person can read his own Megillah. Men shem atzad if there's no ten. Oi she yit ke la'atzma or will blow for himself. Mekom akim toiv shik or echad l'kulam. It's better that one person should read for all of them. L'kayim v'rem v'amadus melech. Avu b'shein chiv v'dav he can't obligate. She'en l'chayim v'adam shakayim v'amitzah v'telus l'av v'de shliach sh'echol k'ar v'atzma. Can't obligate that I should do the mitzvah through a shliach. I want to do it myself. Mitzvah by Yisrael Mishmolcha. Bechem Kiddush Ravdola. Send them by Kiddush Ravdola. That's the minig. So some people have a minig. If there's a lot of people, that one person should make Kiddush. Dafke is a mile. But Reva Madas Amelach. Everyone says Amen. Some people Dafke they have a minig. They have there's a mile. Each one should make his own Kiddush. Well, it's a Friday night. It's a mitzvah. The union of Kiddush. So you, you can't force a person one way or the other. However, says the Alter Rebbe. It's toy if it's a good thing if this temp that uh, that uh, that the Megillah should be read or the Shoifer should be done by one person. It's a better thing that one person. And then once it's once they did it, one person blows Shoifer, one person blows and Megillah, you must have that the bracha should be one. The toy is the toy that the people should get together that shouldn't have separate Megillahs and separate Shoifer. There should be one Shoifer, one Megillah, and then the Megillah there. But tzarich, that there should be the bracha from one. I'm just clarifying what Alter is saying. The toiv is that instead of ten people reading separate the Megillah, that they should read, or five people separate the Megillah, should the five should have one person read. But once one person is reading and they're all listening, then it's tzarich that there should be only one bracha. Now they're ready by his It's one thing, so therefore the bracha has to be one. The Alter Rebbe says it's only ancient Masara, there's no ten. But if there's ten, it's mashmi yachayiv. Yachayiv that there should be. Uh, that the chayv that there should be in a minion dafka. So um, in the Aoris here, the new Aoris is metzayim to the wrong place. Uh, it is metzayim to shuknaras and tafko peites. It's to metzayim to tof reish tzadik. And the Gemara in the beginning of Medila davov, where the machloikis of Rav and Ravasi, you must have ten people by minion. The Gemara says even Rav is masking to Ravasi, but tzad perasum and isa, it's better to have ten people for minion, uh, for Megillah because. Ten people is presum and isa. There's a story about the Gro when he was going out, when he was, I remember as a child reading it, I don't know the mocker of it, but uh, he was going, to, he was incognito. He was a Golos, a private Golos, and he came to a town and they already missed the Megillah reading. They already read the Megillah. But he wanted to be met, the Gemara says, the is Rav Ravasi. And even Rav is made to Ravasi, that even Be'er Nasa, if you read it on Megillah on the right time, it's better to read with a minion. There should be ten people there. 
So uh, he wanted to have 10 people. So he went out in the street, but no one's interested. Hey, this guy's going giving shalat. They didn't know we're talking about the Vilna Goen. They told I slept it. You, you want to you know, come, come in. Who asked you not to come in the morning? You slept, you puffed. Last night you had a good time. The Purim spiel is okay. So read Megillah yourself. Machen Zashmashiga. He got very desperate. The, 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 can you imagine? The, to, to the Vilna Goen. The Gemara says, even now, the Allah is, it's fine, but you want to have a minion. So he, every penny he had in his pocket, he took out and he said, um, he, found, uh, the, he found nine chevra that were walking, ten chevra, a bunch of leitzim that were uh, sitting with the, the they were uh, putim spielers. He said, you know what, I'll give you all the money in my pocket, but tonight that you'll come into shul, I'll read the Megillah and you'll be my minion. They said, no problem. They said, we want to see the money on the table. So the only God, a very honest person, probably everyone's as honest as him, put the money down on the table. He made the bracha. They said, Amen. They grabbed the money and they all disappeared. <laughs> he was left without his money and without a minion. So uh, I'll tell you the story because from the story, I remember the Glomdas and I remember the Gemara. The Gemara, I remember because of the story, not because I learned the, I learned the Gemara, but I remember it because of the story. So there's a Diuk Nifla, I think, in the Alter Rebbe. Last week, I left it off a little bit, Mesupak. If there is, if there really is a minion in the room, a yechayev, that one person should make kiddush, or one person should say a goimel. I left it a little with a tzarechim. I read it with my brother, and I think there's a tiyuk nifla here. The Alter Rebbe says, "Kigon shiik rekol achda megillah atzmi in ein shema asorim." There's no ten. You have the right that everyone should read his own megillah. It's better they should get together, but they have the right to read it separately, as long as there's no minion. If there's a minion, the yechayev. Because Rav Tchalengizok, that there is a persuminissa, so therefore you should you should not read it separately. Oy sheyit kalatzmer by tkiya he doesn't say he doesn't care if there's ten or not ten. By megigila there's a mile of persuminissa. If it's less than ten, you have the right to do one way or the other way. It's better to get together, and then takim and meili bichayev that one person should make the brach of everyone would be tzorich. But like tkiya the Alter Rebbe doesn't say. The difference of his yes yeah, sort of not a sort of. It's always a, it's always shokul. Taka mini Yisrael is that when it comes to blowing shofar, that uh, we don't go out everyone blowing his own shofar. But uh, you can understand why it would be it would be a clown show uh, if we did that. And also not everyone is bucking and blowing shofar. You have to know the halachas. So the one person blows. Mashenkin by Kiddush Bavdola, so some people have the Minik Dafke, the Maila Broibam, and some people like the Maila of Mitzvah Boyoitz and Mishluche. So I think the same thing when it comes to the Brach of Agoimel. That there isn't, it's a Dover Tzorech Echireya. It's not, uh, there's not necessarily one way is better, even if there's a minion, and even if there's 5,000 people in the room, there's a lot of Dafke that there's a Maila one way over the other. There's, each way is good. Maybe a person can say he wants to say himself a goimel, and we and if I care, there's a revam, there's a big oilum. Or to say that the one person will say and everyone will say, oh, I'm gonna be yoitz with him, it's a dover shaku. And even though I said a story of the Chsam Seifer, that the Chsam Seifer, there was uh, when Napoleon came against the city of Pressburg and there was a bomb that fell in front of the shul and no one was hurt and the whole kila got together and he said one big hagoimel. And he said it, by the way, Sasson asked a good question. He changed the Nusach and the Baruch a little bit. It takes the Chesam Soif to do it. He said, but he could say over there was different. There was one bomb that came against the Kehillah. And even though there was a war and there was many specific miracles that happened, but there was one miracle that they were all saved. So therefore he made one Baruch. Anybody Chesam Soif could have his own opinion. But now today it's Mashma that, so, that it's not, there's not that Kamila one way over the other. So therefore, uh, back to our Shailan, the Corona, if a person doesn't know if he's chayv to make or not, better hear from someone else and say amen and have a mind to be yoitza and ask the person to have you in mind as well. And even if he's making a gamble for a different reason, he had a surgery. Uh, I'm sorry, surgery is chayl and it's the same thing. He went across the Atlantic and, and, and you went over the, uh, you were chayl and it's rapid, eichet kosher, it's eichet gut, and he is daiti. It's not a problem. Not a problem. Not like the, que- the, the question mark that was left in the item with Arlen. But if you could say it on your own, there might be a mile. Such a shock. One or the other. It's not uh, either way is good.
Okay. Sorry, again, I went into Arichas about Hagoimel. The Vaila, we, I think we fleshed out a few very Gishmaka things about the Shaila of Hagoimel. As I said, Hagoimel is Negea all the time. People have always, uh, Halavai, we always have Nisim. That we should always have Nisim. We should always, we should say, Anisachet Shabachol Yimimimonu. And we should speak in the Oifim that Lachatchila, Ein Baal Nes Maker Ben Nisri. But when we need the Nes, we should have the Nisim. It should be in abundance. Okay, so let's summarize what we had here. Um, we had a question if the uh, Arba Tzirich Melhoides they could go the Choyla could bench for the Chova uh, bench and the Chovish will say Amen and um, the Odom Gedolim says it depends with the Korban Toide you see the Korban Toide that's not simple one can't cover for the other so I think it's totally how you learn the Pshat that Agoyim was Mokim Toide if it's instead of a Korban Toide that's the same rules in fact the question stays an unanswered question but if you say Agoyim is when there is a carbon toy that there also should be a goyim. So, but a goyim is, is thank you. What's the difference? All four is thank you to the Ebishter. So uh, I think it's not a problem. Okay. Let's go to the second or third question quickly because time is a little short. Someone, the someone that uh, the, that uh, that. Uh, that tells me about the uh, okay. I'll tell you who my son-in-law tells me that uh, Friday night I have to, I have to cover the bottle before I make kiddush. It's a kabbalah from the Bashem So I thought it was off the wall, but I was eyeing this week, and I see he's not wrong. He's talking not off the wall at all. It was talking true. But it's a funny thing. I don't understand the reason for it, but I sent you in the modern comments would you like to see from several different modern uh, sources that all say the same thing. That uh, that uh, there's a Kabbalah from the Bashem Tov that listem pi akli shayayim betoichem b'magufa acher shemoyzik as a koyz lo kiddush alai lo koyz shem akiddush. Now there's a beautiful sefer from Rav Zelikson on Shabbos on the issues of Shabbos. He brings that that was the Rebbe's minik. Now I'm not sure. You say that's the Rebbe's minik. You know when the Rebbe ate a piece of cake or you know marble cake. You know, the Rebbe used to take a, a napkin, he used to cover it. They never uh, had food as a begoli on the table. The Rebbe would take a little, make a broch and take a little piece and then wipe his uh, lips how many times with a napkin? Six times or ten times. The Rebbe was, you know, the Rebbe's minigatsniyas, but the recheritz was on the highest level. And mis- could be our pikabola, the zing, you know, six times wiping the lips and ten times, and that also has a yushpa shef arav as also, but I don't know. I don't know if that's a raya gemurah, but anyway, it's interesting. I, I was wondering why. What could be the reason? So, 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 someone said that maybe the reason is that the wine on the table shouldn't become pogum if the bottles are opened. I think that would be an off the wall reason. One of the five ways the Alter Rebbe gives that uh, eight said that you can give a wine to the people around you without the wine becoming pogum is that you you make the you, you finish kiddush and before you drink it, you pour it into their cup and it's not pogum. So madoch, that the cup itself that you made kiddush on, if as long as you didn't drink from it, it's it's not pogum. The pogum is not from the broch. The pogum is from you drinking. And since you didn't drink, it's not pogum. You put it into someone's cup. So kol the wine that's in the bottle, what's the difference if it's covered or not covered? So my son-in-law said maybe maybe it's uh, it's like it's brought that the that uh, one of the reasons that we cover the challah, not the main reason, but one of the reasons is that the challah shouldn't be embarrassed if the wine's going first. But that would be a, because the challah has a right to be before the wine, because he's more, he sustains the person. So therefore, it, but the wine and the wine, so what was, what we're concerned that the wine and the bottle will be jealous. Um, definitely could be a... Ta- huh? What, Nasi, what did you say? No, no, I'm sorry. So uh, it could be, it's also, uh, there's Hilchas Der Cheretz and Suda. The Rambam has a whole Perek in Hilchas Brochus. He says, Menhogis na Arab is nogu chachim Yisrael besuda. Could be, it's, all, it's just a way of Der Cheretz. It's like a derech of uh, Zoylo Vesoyve that uh, you think of a guy that's drinking wine, he's drinking beer. He's not going to, he's not going to close it. First of all, he's going to, he'll drink it straight from the bottle. Tomet Shintona Toiva will do you a favor and drink it out of a cup. But why is he going to cover the bottle? He has to be close to the fountain. He has to keep. He wants to keep on drinking. 
If chasrish he has to, have to cover the bottle, it'll be complicated. He has to open it again the bottle. So he 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 has the hand one hand on the bottle and one hand on the cup, and and he keeps on pouring. It's a zoyla. It's a derech of a zoyla v'soiv. The minig like Rambam says, "Menhogis Rab is besuda." He brings a lot of things to Gemara. It's derech edits in the suda. The way he eats is uh, the 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 like the Rambam writes in Hechas Deis. Chochim is nicker not only in his chochma. He's nicker in the way he eats, the way he drinks. Is nicker a yid? Is the nicker like you know kiddush b'makim suda? Where do you see that a yid is kedusha? Is when he eats a suda and an oifin shal kedusha eats l'shem shemayim eats like I mentioned. Not like Azar Lebesayv, it could be that's the reason the Mashem. Well, <laughs> also, reasons are Pikabola. It could be multiple reasons. In New York City, it's unlawful to drink from an open bottle. So, um, someone who knows that will always cover a bottle. It's uh-huh. not a matter of Derek Eretz, it's a matter of not wanting to be arrested. But that's okay. or, or getting a ticket, getting a ticket. Uh-huh. I can't imagine the law includes the, the, the when you're making kiddush that uh, that if a, if the cop comes in and sees that you didn't do kabbalah sabashamtin, you made kiddush and you didn't uh, st- st- put the cork back into the bottle, yeah, that, uh, that will get you a ticket because you made kiddush shalok if kabbalah sabashamtin. It's very elementary. I'll explain to you. I, I don't know why you, I'm sure this is the reason, in my opinion. Or for many reasons. One of them is that, as we know, if it's yayin mevushal, then uh, there's, there's there's no there's no problem. I think, and certain bottles are are not boiled, so the small the the the, the small amount are um, you have to cover them. The larger bottles, I think it's the larger bottles that are boiled. So the thing is. I don't think necessarily that one would want to distinguish. Oh, maybe there's someone uh-huh. here who's like Luke, not okay. Jewish. Maybe uh-huh. someone who's not Jewish. So keep it covered all the time. Doesn't uh-huh. matter. Keep it covered all the time, just in case. Okay. 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 We have another shot. Third question. Someone asked me this question in shul uh, some time ago. Uh, when he wears the Rabbeinu Tam Tfilin, he says Shema. And there's, you know, minion factories and there's, you know, minion and Kadeshin going on. Is he allowed to, in the middle of Shema, you're not allowed to be Mafsik. Only for Dovish Abedusha, Kaddish, the omens before Tiska, the Tiskabel. You're allowed to make a Hefsik in the middle of uh, saying Shema when you're wearing the Rabbeinu Tam Tfilin. So it happens to be, we were learning about, a little touched on this in this week in the Simon Samach Zayin in Eurachaim. The bottom line is there's a Rebbe Kiva Ege that's Matzayin too, as Tshuva Ponimiris, which has a beautiful pilpul about this, and maybe we'll cover it on Wednesday night by the Shir. But the bottom line is he holds that it's not when you say Shema in the morning, Krishma, Krishma Ketana, because you you know you don't want to go over Zman Krishma, and and also later when you say Krishma with the Brochas, when you make Kabbalah Al Machu Shemaim, then you have to all the laws of the Mishnah. You can't make a Hefsek unless if may Akovid may Ayida. And uh, only for Kaddish Kedusha Borchu and the Omens that before Tiskabel and so on, only Omen for Kela uh, Kodesh and and the Shema Keleinu. But but Phil de Rabbeinu Tam says the he says it's not a problem. You just you can't stop to talk to a friend because it's not Kavodik. You're being Makabal. You're saying Kirishma at the end of the day. But he says it's Mestaber that uh, you could say you could stop for any reason. For any valid reason, which any omen, any omen would be a valid reason to stop. Uh, so uh, Rabbi, that's the uh, bottom line, huh? What about uh, uh, saying a man or kedusha between Yad and Rosh of uh, Rabbeinu, Rabbeinu Tam? I know it's impossible for Rashi, but Rabbeinu Tam, do they, do they make it on that? Yes, 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 yes. Because anyway, it wouldn't make it wouldn't cause us to make another bracha. So the answer is yes. Okay. Chassidim, tonight we're going to Fabreng. We're going to Fabreng in basement Uh I hope that there is an oilum that can come. If you're uh, still, if you still can't come, please join us through Zoom. So we'll do both. Whoever would like to come, we're going to have Fabreng in basement Menachem Mendel, 8.30 tonight. 
And whoever would like to join us by Zoom, please join us. It's a Moirideh, a Semcha, Yud Beis, Yud Gimel Tamas. All the years that Rebbe Fabreng and the Rebbe Fabreng is a very Gishmak. Tonight, Blineda, I'm going to focus on the, on the uh, story of the Friedrich Rebbe. Uh, there's an unbelievable story of a, uh, that he made a covenant with 10 men that they're going to have him say this nefesh to the last drop of blood. So we're going to Dab and Mariv? Yes, Let's... yes, we're going to Dab and Mariv after the Fabreng. Whoever could come uh, send the text to Peretz that he's coming, so this way Peretz would know if we have a minion or not. Yes, that's a good idea. Coming, parrots. I'm coming, parrots. Just text them so this way you know on the phone. Okay, and Mr. Shem, around. we're soon going to send out an email. If you could, uh, if you'd like to spread to another chava and to another chava to Mazak, another you to join the the the, the Chagag Yula, the feed that you wrote yeah. that this Chagag Yula is not only for me, for every yid, Kol Hashem Yisrael Yisrael Yechuna, that this is a Gula. So this day has an unbelievable koyach, an unbelievable power in it. To, to every one of us needs a geula protis, a, a redemption. Our own avodas Hashem. Sometimes we blunder. Arbet zirichim lahoydus. That there is uh, in our avodas Hashem, we blunder, and sometimes in the desert, sometimes we end up in the ocean, and sometimes chas v'shalom is spiritual chelas. And from this chas v'shalom could come a physical chelas also. So uh, the 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 way to the way to the way to the the medicine for this is definitely to, by connecting to the chag geula. Yud Beis and Gimel Tamas, and that will give us a koyach to have a geula in our own avoid of Hashem. David should help that uh, we should all have a, a geula protis in our avoid of Hashem, and that should usher in the geula kilolis and the bias Mashiach to Kenu taken from Yad Mamish. Amen. 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 Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. Hello, Rose. Where you live in, in Israel? Where are you? In New York? Not yet. <laughs> Carolina, still in Carolina? Yeah, right now. Oh, join us. Thank you for joining us. I hope you can join us with the Fabrengen oh, sure. tonight. It's, it's wonderful to see you. It's like uh, unbelievable. Have the, a good yam One good thing of the internet is the Zoom. The Zoom shiurim. Unbelievable. Yes, uh, Amen.